turn, shall we? Welcome back to Nick Lens Comic Corner Classic Classic Noon Classics. This is episode number 2028 20, and double shot number 1922. I have two trades that are from two different cro that have issues that are part of two, two different crossovers. One that came out three years ago, the other one came out just last year. First of all, we have War of the Realm Spider Man slash Daredevil. Yep. Now, this contains Spider Man in the League of Realms, which is a three issue miniseries plus material from War of the Realms War Scrolls. Now, Spider Man and the League, the League, of, League of Realms. This is basically something from the Jason Aaron Realms. This is the third lineup of the group because they had the original lineup being his debut in God of Thunder, which was a very good story, by the way. And they had him return when Jane Foster was Thor and he had a few new members. Heck, they even had Ross on with the group. This group is a mixture of basically, it's like, they have Screwbird here. He was part of the first and second incarnation of League of Realms. League of Realms are basically the way Ross would just describe them as token Avengers. Basically, they're the, they're a group of individuals who work for the, for, work for the, the, the Senate, the, the, basically the, the Congress of Realms. That's most of what they're for. Spider-Man, for some reason, is put in charge of the group. And this is his contribution to War of the Realms. Well, in the tie-ins, of course. And his mission is to take down the Angels, who have sided with the Dark Elves, for reasons. Uh, Malekith the Accursed makes a brief cameo appearance in this book, in a flashback. Yep, so they go and they fight this Angel, who is apparently a lesbian. Yeah, apparently, according to the rules, the Angels are not the final fall in love, and yet... They're allowed to have, apparently this one was, uh, had a secret lesbian relationship with another angel. And then Malachi apparently never killed an angel before. This is to kill her lover. So basically she's forced to cooperate with Malachi. And then she turned on the dark, and then she and her fellow angels. And joined the dark, during the League of Realms, which they apparently split in half. Because Spider-Man does not kill. I at least got praised the fact the writer of this series. Who wrote this one? This was, uh, done by Sean Ryan. I at least got praise for the fact he actually remembered, yeah, Spider-Man does not kill. Not at all. Basically, he'll be diplomatic. He will fight these creatures. He will not kill them. If they want to kill him, fine. He will not kill them. But this miniseries was really good. The only problem was, it's only three issues. I kind of wish this was, this was more, this was actually longer because you, you read this series and it's like, man, we have so much material we can draw from. Spider-Man, lead League of Realms, and... I think wraps up issue three. Yeah, in the case of the uh, War of the Realms War Scrolls, yeah, this is one done by Jason Aaron. He writes this one, which is interesting though because it's a Daredevil story. Now you might be thinking, Nick, has Jason Aaron ever wrote anything related to Daredevil? To my knowledge, part of the story, let's see, from any Daredevil book? Nope, never a single issue of that series. You might be thinking, did they have experience writing Dinner before part of this one? Well, aside from him appearing in the main miniseries, no, mostly put, basically, this is what Daredevil was up to on the side, cause on the side, like having to force a team up with Wilson Fisk, one of his one of his deadliest enemies. They got an invading army, which is interesting, to say the least. By the way, during the event, uh, Heimdall was taking on the commission, so Daredevil takes up a spot as the guardian of the Bifrost. He even gets Heimdall's sword. And this is basically a good story for good little story for him. Sadly, put his book at the time did not reflect this, which is interesting though because if you're curious though, who was writing this book at this time? This miniseries came out. Oh, let's see. I believe it was Chip Sardesky. Yep, he was writing the book at this point in time. And no, it was not Charles Show. It was Chip Sardesky. But yeah, this book is really good. I love it. Give this book a 9. Uh, basically, I'm going to give it a 10. Because it's just so freaking good. Yeah. It is something that they, they did this. Now, now War Scrolls, this is basically a multi-story book. It's basically War of the Realms anthology book. Now, if you're curious, though... Like... Is there, like, any other, like, stories in these ones? Well, in the case of the first issue, aside from the Daredevil story... 
We also have in the main book we have Warriors Three. We have Nice Shot Frank. I believe this actually was in uh Punisher Kill Crew. Yep. And that was just the opening issue. By the way, the story picks up at the issue number two of the main book. Yes. Now, eight, we also have Agency, which is a Doctor Strange story. We also have My Drug, My Drag Bunch from Loki. A Wiccan story. Yes, a Wiccan story. As for issue number three, aside of having Daredevil there, we have a Doc Doom story and a Frey and Hulk story, which is interesting. Yeah. I gotta admit, this was really good here. I I think I may have re reviewed one error story from this book. I think it was a Punisher story, but that's it. Daredevil was the only one who actually was the primary focus of the main mini series. He was the main story. It's almost like basically, this is my personal theory, is that there was probably a plan to have Daredevil have a mini series set during War of the Realms, but I guess Mar felt as though he probably fit better in this anthology book because. And this is a theory I have. I think this book was not selling too well at this point in time. Yeah, I think the book may be slipping in sales a little bit. I'm spitballing here. I'm just this is just pure guesswork on my part. I think the sales may take a small dip to this period of time. Because I'm sure Zardesky's run was not getting positive reception. So I figured that okay, Dinner was a popular character, and we need to have him involved in this event, so Let's create this mini series called War. Uh, we have this mini series called War Scrolls. Even though you plan to have probably, uh, I'm just guessing here. Maybe there was a plan to have Daredevil have his own spin-off book in his event. But my guess is the book wasn't selling too well. So like, screw it. Put in the put in this book, and I'm sure the book probably did pretty well. You probably making wise book three issues. Well, here's kind of the strange thing. Almost every single mini series, except for like two or three, that's tied into War Realms. Was only three issues because the book only la the event only lasted three months, but it was six issues. That was because the book basically was released twice a month. That was the reason for that. All right, next up we have Sword by Al Ewing, Volume One. This collects the first five issues of Sword Volume Two. Now I say tie in because basically here's the thing: issues two through four are the King and Black tie in. The first issue is kind of get the book off the ground. Now, basically put, uh, Sword is an agency associated with Krakatoa, and they're, they're basically headquartered the peak, once again, which I got praise out for that, we have Velerto Satoi on the artwork, which the artwork is really good here, was in issue three, co-artwork is by Ranthi Height and Bernard Chang, and the coin uh, Lot. Yeah, by the way, here's your interior artwork for this book, it is really, really good. Yeah, and here's your people who are in charge of this place. Brand is basically the commander. The council representative from the the Quiet Council is Magneto. Their engineering department is led by Wizkid. Le, uh, Le, 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 uh, Legostics, I think it's called. Um, these are your team. You have, we have Quittish's Minefield, who is a Hickman character. They think he's a teleport really just isn't. The teleport team is made up of Blink. The 6 6 first, not the one from Exiles. Lena Cheney, who was a former singer, who I did read that Strong Guy had a crush on her, a very strong crush, who was also a bodyguard at the point. Gateway, Vanisher, a former villain, and Amelia Vaught. Amelia Vaught, at one point, was one of Charles and Davis' many lovers he had over the years. Uh, we also had Faye Cortez, who was listed here as the executive producer. We have Diplomacy that's Negotiation. The Ambassador. Is frenzy. The investment training is armor, a a a Joss Whedon character, and the galactic ambassador for the Kree Score Empire, which Alliance, excuse me, is Pybog. Yes, this is something from the events of Empire. Uh, we also have the security. The director of security is Cable. His subordinates are Risk and Random. The like out of they don't really have a top person, and there's also a guy called Peeper. Yes, seriously. First issue is basically Magni just delivering goods for, well, the the peak. Now Wizkid for some reason 
is in a floating wheelchair. Now, I'm sure this is a nod to Charles Xavier from the 90s Animated Series. But, yeah, Magneto is basically kind of weird here, where he treats every respect. Apparently, he's friends with paper, which is interesting. Yeah, it's just basically, like, Magneto's arrival and just basically a day, a day on the space station. That's most of the first issue is. Well, I'll do a small glass of here and there. It's just really good first issue. Now, issues two through four deal with invasion by the symbiotes, which they invade the station for three issues. Yep, they invade the station, and it's mostly put the team, the the agents, basically fighting off this uh, invasion. We also have apparently where Mento, yes, Mento, a Nick Fury character who is an enemy of S.H.I.E.L.D., formerly, I think he worked for A1 Point, he apparently is working for, well... Of all people, he's working for Bran. For all reasons. Yeah, and this is basically their contribution. Yeah, the contribution to this whole... Also, for some reason, Magneto was in this book. Like, at the start of this book, he's wearing his white armor. Which, that first showed up, if I remember correctly... I think it showed up when Bendis wrote uh, Uncanny X-Men. And then here, he's back in his classic look for some reason. Well, if I have Alien Dragon... And it's a very interesting tie-in. I like this kind of handhood. It feels a little bit like uh, Aliens. Well, at least Alien. That's what basically his book felt, felt like. For some portion of it. Basically fight off an alien invasion. We also have our Hampshire guy basically gets involved here. Yeah, and by the way, the tie-in itself is rather by issue 4. But it's a really good tie-in. I'll give my final thoughts on the whole event when I finish this book. Excuse me. And then, of course, uh, toward the end of issue 4... David Cortez is killed and he is resurrected. And of course he has to debrief the Quay Council while he's completely naked and covered in goo. Yes. And, and apparently they apparently he also took time to make sure he covers up his groin. But he basically debriefs them and well then he's allowed to go. Simple as that. He even asked like wait you have to go to the Quiet Council now? I, I need a shower I need a clothes. Like, nope, do it right now. And, well, right afterwards, basically, that. Doing some other stuff here. And the book ends basically where we're, they're building, like, something more inside one of the hangars. You know, like, something there. And that's the book itself. Yeah. For the start of this particular brief run for Sword, uh, it's really good. Give this book a 9.5 out of 10. Um, I should also mention that the book does have one more trade. I like the first find, which published, I think it was back in 2009, I think it was. Uh, that lasted for five issues. Now, this is an ongoing series, not a limited series. And they got axed at the five issues. This book managed to last for 11 issues before we canceled. Now, uh, why was it canceled, you might ask? Maybe because Al Ewing left the book. Yeah, for some reason, this book ended at the same time as Guardians of the Galaxy. For some reason. I don't know why. It's weird. Now, in the case of what happens... Now, also, since the fact that this is officially the end of my reviews for the King in Black stuff, I'm going to give my final thoughts on this crossover because it is definite now. I have reviewed everything with this crossover. There is officially... Nothing left. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I have checked. This was the last one. In the case, my, my final thoughts are in black. This is a very excellent crossover. It's got good... It's, it, the story is really good. Like, the, people come together to find an enemy, which is basically calling the symbiotes. Venom is basically kind of heroes. Yeah, mostly put this film was built over the course of two years. I got at least praise on the for this. He's very good at his build-ups for his two event, two or three events he did. Uh, Damnation had a little bit of build-up to it. At least at, at least his two events afterwards. I figure though, yeah, if I'm going to do events, i got to have some build. So, here he has build. Basically, he has to build Absolute Carnage. And Absolute Carnage build up from the into the events of King of Black. The King of Black not only fall from the events of Absolute Carnage, but also Empire. Which is interesting to say the least. Though in the case of in book, Sor was brought back after being defunct for some time. Yes, after the events of, well, Secret Wars, the agency went defunct for no reason. 
I've never heard of the exact reason for it. It was replaced by the Alpha Flight Space Station program. The Alpha Flight Space program. And it was mostly dealt with in the pages of Captain Marvel. And at one point, Carol was in charge of it, and then she left, and the Hamper of Guard took over. And Bran was part of the organization, too, in the Athens Empire. Because of the fact she was left out of the events of Empire, she quit. Ran the spot. She quit her job and went back to Sword. Yeah, Sword was generally put basically an agency deal with aliens. And they were heavily involved during the Joss Whedon run. From pretty much the very start of the run. Now, of course, they did pop up in other books since then. Like, public books like Candy Avengers for like a few issues here at one point peak was destroyed then eventually was re- was rebuilt at some point it was and now uh, now apparently the the agency the associated with with crack with, with uh, krakatoa yeah and apparently that the book ended like anything related to this book was transferred over to x-men red the current five x-men that is yes now why in the world this book end for I might theorize that more when I get to volume two for the series. But in the case of the book overall, it's really good. Al Ewing did a great job of this book. And this is something a problem with Al Ewing and Marvel. Not a problem with the readers. His books are fantastic. No, no none are bad. With the exception of Immortal Hulk, Immortal Hulk. Almost every book he's on keeps getting axed for reasons unexplained. Either that Marvel at times has faith in him, or they don't have faith in him. Is he a terrible writer? No, he is not. He is not a terrible writer. His books are fantastic. The problem is, Marvel keeps acting his books for no reason. At least that's in my opinion, anyways. Yep, so yeah, that's particularly a particular view. Uh, I think it's I'm going to go straight ahead and do basically my, comic, my review of One Piece. Okay, next video. Bye.